Welcome to the Meta One Coin Report, exploring the world of private digital currency through the eyes of human rights and empowerment for humanity. Here's your host, Leanne Carroll. Meta One Coin is a cryptocurrency with a social mission. It is designed to advance freedom and abundance for humanity. It is the world's first appreciating stablecoin backed by gold assets, created for the purpose of freedom, equity, and abundance. Meta One Coin is a private trust operating in a private jurisdiction, existing outside of the jurisdiction and control of central banks, government agencies, and financial institutions. These entities have no legal bearing on Meta One, allowing it to operate freely and without costly interference. This provides the potential for greater equity and opportunity for all of humanity. With the launch of the private Meta Exchange, coin holders can buy, sell, and hold Meta One coin. Meta One has built highly sophisticated front and back end technology systems to enable a seamless user experience for the global marketplace. Meta One also pioneered a streamlined, secured party creditor process. Combined with additional private, non statutory trust, a coin holder can facilitate complete asset protection under an internationally recognized legal arrangement known as the Meta One Coin Private Jurisdiction. Robert P. Dunlap is joining the podcast today. Robert is the executive trustee of Meta One Coin Trust and founder of Metanomics, an entire economic ecosystem based on Meta One Coin Trust. Robert is sharing his unique perspective on sovereignty, both spiritual sovereignty and what it means to be sovereign in the world. Meta One Coin and universal law were brought forth together, as you can't truly have one without the other. Robert explains this perspective in this episode. Please join me in welcoming Robert to the podcast. Hello, Robert. Welcome to the program. Thank you so much, Leanne, for having me. I want to talk about Meta One and I want to talk about universal law. They are combined. They are intertwined and one leads to the other, which leads to the other. And Meta One is becoming a large financial metanomic system, an entire ecosystem based on Meta One Coin Trust. And you are the executive trustee of Metanomics. So one thing I like to say is Meta One is becoming a change agent for the world, for the common good. And I know that you can really relate to that statement. How would you interpret that? Every space, every character, every punctuation point, every breath, every pulse of blood through our system is a uh, support of Meta One as a change agent. So everything we do, everything we've ever done is is all focused uh, towards Meta One being an agent of change, a much needed agent of change on this planet, definitely. So absolutely. Meta One and universal law are really creating solutions they're creating choices and it's also creating a um an awakening of people understanding what the monetary system is and how it's enslaved our humanity and then also the legal system and how the legal system has enslaved us via the birth certificate and other solutions that they have so it's kind of a blend of solutions for humanity letting for me it is just letting everyone know because the systems are here that they don't have to participate in the legal system they don't have to participate in the slave system or the banking system we can create our own system that is a parallel system that runs simultaneously side by side yes absolutely uh, you know the the two systems you mentioned meta one coin and universal law, they're, they're a complete solution. They have to be a complete solution. We had to build a legal framework in order to have a truly sovereign trading platform of men and women trading equitably in a free market. So we had to uh, clean them up legally, meaning we had to uh, irrevoke some previous contracts with state and federal governments that were 
placed on the human at, at birth and, and forward of birth to every day to voter registration, to receiving mail with a social, uh, with a zip code. It, it goes deep. There's a lot of things. It's, it's way greater than this, this message here. But so we had to unencumber the, what we call the fictional character or the, the debtor, which is how everyone operates presently in their existence from the moment they're born and the moment their umbilical cord is, is, is cut from their mother. So it's, it's a very powerful. And, 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 and then once we had an unencumbered human, which takes, a, you know, effort in the universal law, we give this gift away. So our starting opening position to humanity is, is, is actual freedom, uh, legal freedom, true freedom, and it's sovereignty. So we, we, we open up uh, in commerce with the gift of freedom. And once you are, are secured, as we call it, um, we, then will allow you to trade in our platform with a sovereign coin and a sovereign true um, distributed exchange where it's a peer-to-peer -peer marketplace. So we're giving you a proper place to transact business. Um, and these things have never, ever, these things haven't occurred. Uh, you know, I don't want to say never, but it's been a long time, let's say. That's right. And you did this process yourself quite a few years ago. Yes. Absolutely. I was, I, I remember when I first heard about this and I had a in-house counsel with one of my companies and I went and asked him, I was like, Hey, um, what do you think about this? And, and my internal attorney thought it was insanity. I then showed my CPA, uh, some ideas and tax settlements and they're like, you're, you're absolutely crazy. <laughs> this is insane. And so that was my first impression, you know, to bring it to your known attorney, to bring it to your financial accountant um, and, and ask questions. Cause see, then at that time, you're still in, you're still in that, that system. You, you've always believed in apple pie, Chevrolet, baseball, uh, you know, the constitution, et cetera, et cetera. And so I, I was the, the, you know, that was me. I was a, a soldier, a veteran, I paid my taxes early. I paid lots of taxes. I went to church on Sunday. Uh, you know, I had apple pie, <laughs> you know, literally. Um, and so, and I was a very staunch Republican and independent on some days. And I, I wasn't understanding how I could be considered a slave within the system I believed freed me, right? How could I think for one moment that this beautiful Republic <clears throat> with a constitution of inalienable rights could enslave me. So I was very disillusioned for a while when I was hearing these things and reading about these um, secured party processes. And, and, and then I was learning that all debt is completely and is completely fabricated and fictional within the banking systems. And that alone was mind blowing to me. That took me a while, like years <laughs> to fully develop my position in these things. Cause I was very traditional classically trained Republican capitalist, you know, things like that. So it was like someone just told me the world was upside down and, and I was, you know, figuring it out and going through it. So I, I fully understand when we so casually throw these words out, you know, debtor, slave, fictional character, and we're calling someone's own re their, their only aspect of reality of who they stand in society a debtor slave. I know it's a harsh word and a fictional character. What do you mean? I'm fictional. I don't understand. You know, these are this is like crazy talk to to some of my uh, previous barred attorneys. Um, so I get it. I, I fully understand it. But as you're mentioning, this isn't just a legal awakening. This is a massive, massive, massive spiritual awakening. There is no separation between the two. And there's no separation between anything. And that's one of the biggest illusions on this planet, that there is separation. So, uh, so this is very powerful energetically in who you are. Uh, when you unencumber your human in, in, the, in the physical form of this planet Earth or on the terra forma, the Earth plane, however you want to mention it in your vernacular, it's a very powerful thing. What are you saying to your creator? What are you saying to the universe, to Bigfoot, to whoever you believe, right? Allah, Jesus Christ, all the above, et cetera, et cetera, because there, there, there's only you know a single creator. Um, and so when you tell your creator that, hey, I, I own myself again, I'm back in business, 
this is a beautiful thing, right? Energetically, spiritually. And then you have new opportunities. Your existence will then change your timelines and possibilities of who you can become going forward are greatly impacted by this. So it's extremely powerful. I mean, it's the greatest gift anyone could give anyone on this planet. And that's what we, that's our day one uh, door prize with Meta One Coin, with Metanomics is here you go, man, woman on dry ground. Here's a very complica complicated, tried and true legal process in which we unencumber that you, you're human and, uh, and take you out of the fictional system and make you a living, breathing man or woman as a creditor with, with actual merit in the system in which you have presided in from your day one. So I think it's a pretty nice gift. And, and it's just the precursor to who we are and what we're here to do. We're about performance. We're not sitting on a couch theorizing on what could be or what was not or what, what is. We're showing you what we can do and we're doing it. Uh, the systems in which we've built can facilitate millions and millions of people. It was always designed for millions and millions of people. The more people that are awakened, the more people that can actually start really operating in this planet and really doing business, really living a life of empowerment. It's, it's, it's just amazing to me uh, when I look at everyone and I look at these amazing political sites and there's some smart people analyzing what was and what, what is and what could should have been and what is that where does that get you gets you nowhere you can talk about that for millennia and and in millennia it has been spoken and there is nothing has changed this is the true change agent this is a true change agent nothing is more profound in your existence than owning yourself and that is our our starting prize that's so beautiful. And it really gets me into wanting to talk about sovereignty, spiritual sovereignty, individual sovereignty, legal sovereignty, and sort of redefining sovereignty within ourselves and within our ideas and how we operate in the world. Your spiritual sovereignty cannot be breached. It is not allowed to be given to a man or to a fictional character acting as a corporation, con consciously or unconsciously. These are contracts that are not valid within universal law, the, the law of the universe, not our website, universal law. Um, so your consciousness and your sovereignty are inalienable rights given by your creator. They're not, there's not even an option. It's not on the table. And any contract, as it were, uh, infringing upon those rights are null and void and we're assisting uh, with those of you that are awake and, and would pursue this activity uh, with the, the modality in which to, to straighten out your spiritual side, because there is paper. Think about the spiritual aspect and the, and the, and the legal aspect. It, to, to me, is very similar because you're establishing your intentions. Your intentions are what is the creative catalyst of who you are and what you're creating in your existence. So, there's no separation in anything, and especially legal and, and, and spiritual sovereignty. So your spiritual sovereignty was always intact. It, you came in, you were born, you were birthed, <laughs> your umbilical cord was cut. And then at that moment in time, the state mandates that you are given a certificate of live birth and then therefore property of the state. Of course, your parents are, they have rights, but their rights are are within the uh, statutory uh, legal aspects of a parent-child relationship that is previously uh, arranged upon. Um, these rights are, are, are very limited. You can lose these rights. And, and technically, the new child is a ward of the state. The state owns your child. Um, if you breach any of these rights, or there's an assumption that you breach these rights, or the, or the conditions in which you would be a parent, you will never see your child again. If you think you own your child, then ask your school district why they tell you <laughs> what they tell you, right? It, it, about what they can be taught, what they cannot be taught. Try to take your kid out of school. <laughs> try, to, try to bring a real textbook to a, a state-run institution. Uh, it doesn't happen. It doesn't work. Uh, so, so sovereignty spiritually 
is in, is uh, is is never replaced by a state, and that's in the misconception that started in the 1920s when birth certificates were starting to be published and required, and it's even more strict now. I've had a child, a son, and the state of Florida was <laughs> thinking they had rights to my my living, breathing son, which they did not, and I enforced it. And I don't think they'll be doing that again. But this is like the first time I think anyone has filed suit against a state on the allegations that they have a right to create a certificate of live birth and claim a living, breathing human. But, you know, typically, uh, anyway, they can because most mothers and fathers are fictional characters and don't own themselves. So it's, it's amazing. So legal and spiritual spirituality, there is no separation. And, and good spirituality is always held by good good intentions, good paperwork, as I say. What is your strategy? Do you own yourself? What is your position? Are you are you a ward of the state or you're a sovereign man? Yeah. The people who wake up to not wanting to give their mental sovereignty over to authority figures, they say, okay, I'm sovereign. I'm, I'm going to decide not to give my mind over to authority and not to agree to authority anymore. They really don't have standing. They have proper understanding that that they've been giving their authority away but they don't have the proper standing well sure and 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 if and if i was to say hey uh you know state of texas florida etc i've got you know you don't have any authority over me anymore you have a good day right right that would be an incomplete statement because if i was a typical fictional character at let's say 50 or 40 years of life I have agreed to so many contracts with the state in which gave them jurisdiction over me. So it would be an incomplete legal response. It would be incomplete legal uh, irrevocation of who I've, well, I've already contracted. You know what I mean? So I know there's beautiful groups out there that I, I appreciate their work and they say, well, I'll just declare myself sovereign and I'll write it on a napkin at the bar and I'll throw it in the air as I walk out after happy hour. Therefore, I'm sovereign. Right. And, and, and if that's what they believe, I don't want to say that's not the truth. I'm just saying try to show that in court <laughs> on your way out the door. Right. As you walk out the door, you better have some good legal paper. Hence, our secured party creditor uh, paperwork, not a bar napkin with some uh, beer stains on it that's filed on the floor of a pub. Right. That's not going to answer any state questions regarding your revocation of, of, of contract, et cetera. So anyway, it's very exciting. So Meta One is also streamlined a uh, secured party creditor process for all of the Meta One coin holders, but that also includes a trust, a legal, it's a, um, Statutory trust for so, yes, yeah, so a non statutory private irrevocable trust, and it's written in what we call a syntactical language, um, that's superior language in, in in the jurisdiction in which we enforce. And I can't really mention that right now, but um, but just imagine, imagine you're in commerce, and you bought a house, and you bought a car, and you have a couple of businesses. Well, you have to distribute the liability of these commercial actions right you can't just do it under your name and it incurs liability and it's not good business and you don't have to be a rocket science legal tactician to understand that you want to diversify your holdings and in commerce it's proper to have a a trust in which we create to operate your business uh and as a secured party creditor which you would be when you get one of our trust you are the trustee and and or you know beneficiary or there's many positions within the trust a grant or protect or trustee and beneficiaries so regardless of of the the positions within the trust that we create they're all secured party creditors living breathing humans unencumbered by the state so our trusts are amazing they're so solid and 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 i just i remember you know back in the day when i was creating these requirements in business and in life <laughs> what I paid for these things, you know, um, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. I mean, one of the most expensive one was 500,000. Uh, the cheapest one is six, 7,000 um, and anything in between, honestly. And so when we, through universal law on behalf of metal one coin, present to our coin holders, not only the secure, secure yourself, absolutely, 
but we give you a private trust, as we mentioned, and only secured parties are members of these trusts. It's unbreachable. It's typically very expensive. And then the, we, um, your wallet is created within these trusts. Okay. And, and when we create the secured party credit or paperwork for the human, um, we do a filing. It's called a UCC-1. It's the way all commercial transactions are, are accounted for. Um, it's been going on this way since the 30s, 1930s. And then when we create your trust, we also do a UCC-1. It's, it's a formation instrument. It's, it's done in a sovereign manner. It doesn't incur liabilities with the Secretary of State, in which we file. And so, it's, which is even cooler or more profound and proper is when uh, we issue a wallet, it's assigned to the trust, right, um, automatically. We do an automatic assignment of these wallets to the trust. It's called a UCC-3 assignment instrument. And that is an automatic feature of our, of our system. And when we do these procedures automatically, it means that we can facilitate this uh, process across the entirety of our enterprise, the entirety of our exchange. And at the end of the day, when we have tight, 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 or proper underwriting of, of ownership and assets and positions of these assets, they are truly unencumbered by a state or federal government. And like I said earlier, we used to pay a lot of money for this kind of stuff. And now we're automating it within our the entirety of our exchange and our legal systems. And we're, we're charging $20, $22, whatever the number is, somewhere around there, obviously. And literally, that's it. That's, that's it. It's, and that's our filing fee. That is our filing fees. So it's, it's, it's a gift, absolute gift. And we, I mean, we know what we're doing in regards to asset assignment, ownership, in an unencumbered manner. And we are giving everyone from a, a person that has one coin to a million coins, the same legal precedence and underwriting facilities. So uh, yes, we do include a trust. <laughs> it, it would be incorrect if we did not. That is that is amazing. And that is internationally recognized as well. It's you're safe and secure across the entire globe. Absolutely, absolutely. UCC is International Registry of Commerce. That's where we file. That's so profound. And Meta One is a private trust operating in a private jurisdiction. And government agencies have no legal bearing on Meta One, allowing it to operate without interference. That is so profound. And, and just let me even break it down a little bit further for you. And, and what it means, and this is part of my verbose explanation of metanomics, is when you are in an unencumbered trust, transacting in unencumbered assets, all members are secured and unencumbered by a state or federal government. Do you think the IRS has a claim to any of your revenues? Do you think for a second we talk about capital gains taxes? No, we do not. <laughs> of course we do not. It would be incorrect to assume that revenues made or assets made throughout the meta exchange would be considered taxable because they are not unless unless the coin holder chooses to contract with these government agencies or taxing authorities and chooses to make any types of payments on regarding any alleged liability. So it's, 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 it's even better than you, you know, it's, it's amazing. Um, and so, yes, we, we do these uh, legal actions and set this foundation number one, because we want our, humans to not be harassed uh, by these agencies regarding just the, the, the legal aspect of, of trading and purchasing digital tokens, right? Representative of dollars, uh, representative of metal, representative of whatever they're representative of. We're, we're very, very, uh, um, we're very tired of watching these, you know, we're, we're into freedom, obviously, and we're into human rights and we're into sovereignty. So we do not want our sovereign men and women trading our, our tokens on our private exchange to be harassed by any government, state, federal, United States, uh, any, any government. 
outside the United States as well. And so we have to have a proper legal position from A to Z in which we can sit back and be like, yep, that we can enforce. That is actually our pleasure to enforce. And we have enforced this many times. And it is a pleasure every time to enforce this position. And, and we're setting precedents that has never been set before. And, and it's our absolute pleasure. And these are things that somebody has to do, right? We can't all just sit around and complain about the tax code as a fictional character, right? We, we have solutions. Our modality and our platform will facilitate expansion and millions of members. So... And the other thing, too, is it, without taxation, there can't be war and there can't be unapproved uh, government activities without contribution. Well, think about this. When there is another jurisdiction, let's just say such as Meta, that, that living, breathing men and women can choose to function in and trade in and invest in, those dollars are, are out of the Federal Reserve, the U.S. Treasury. They're out of these agencies control. These agencies, I mean, try telling the IRS that, no, thank you on this uh, tax bill. You're, nah, we're not going to do it. They'll just take the money out of your bank, right? They, they don't care. Just, so we're, we're, we're exiting the entirety of that system, and we're going to a fresh cut place that has good underwriting and good solid international bearing legally to trade and to accumulate wealth and not be burdened by these continual tax collectors. And to answer your question, of course, when the revenue is decreased from all this lovely stuff that these people do, and obviously these wars against other countries will be lessened due to the financial differences that they're going to see on their bottom line. And and so, yes, absolutely. War will be decreased. Um, everything that these governments are doing to enslave and entrap and to harass and cause such duress to humanity will be decreased. And so, you know, I know we speak about what will be decreased, but what are we, what can we also convert? I'm a turnaround guy. Think about infrastructure that has been built by this very, interesting let's just say a government or corporations whatever you call it but look at this beautiful infrastructure i can get on the car and i can drive from end to end west and uh south whatever north to, north to south west to east it's a beautiful infrastructure that that is created and 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 we just need to restructure a couple things here and there and and make it about the people again make it more honest yeah I agree. It's about the people, not the corporations. We, the people, not uh, the corporation about the corporation and the people are enslaved by the corporation. We got, we got sidetracked. We lost ourselves a little bit. We need to find ourselves, uh, you know, so. Find that spiritual sovereignty. And that kind of gets into what, just what you were talking about. It, it's called the great expansion of wealth, eliminating and removing the deterioration of currency units by government agencies. Every time there's a transaction, how they get a little piece and how it's um, a meta one coin holder will be able to transact without all of these little pieces. Just like the Romans, whenever you would, whenever they would get their coins back, they would take a little piece of it and put it over here. <laughs> <laughs> They've been doing that so long to the dollar. Is it even worth a penny anymore? No, 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 no. It costs, they actually, no, let me explain. Uh, it costs 13 cents to print each note. So there's a cost associated with the production of each note. So the value is, there is no value. Um, so, but, but, let's, but let's expand on that, that notion that you have. And that's part of what we're defining in our verbose explanation of what we're referring to as a, uh, metanomics. So imagine, if you will, not just the, the decreased fees and taxes of every movement of everything you do. I, I make a million dollars. My net profit is a million dollars. Well, 72% goes to all these different agencies for tax purposes, state, federal. So think about that. Who's in charge of who right now? So yes, imagine the empowered uh, entrepreneur or man or woman making a million dollars in net profits 
and and let's just say you you're taxed on what you purchase, right? It's called a use tax. It's let's just say instead of seventy percent, it goes to let's say eight and a half, ten, seven, twelve, wherever you want to go. There there is a bit of a taxation for the oversight and and the facilities and and utilities that are very much appreciated. Um, so let's just say you instead of seventy percent, you're down to eight percent, right? The balance of that is within the entrepreneur's possession. He can continue to grow these funds, continue to hire, continue to do research and development, do acquisitions, turnarounds, uh, invent new products and services. Think about the expansion of the economy just on a single, simple premise. Okay, and then let's take it a step further. When you when you bring in the advent of cryptocurrency, because think about it. The cryptocurrency market, I believe, in in, in the, the various uh, agencies that are reporting, are around almost nine hundred billion currently. Nine hundred billion is several times the uh, uh, New York Stock Exchange. So think about what we've created, and it's and it's in it's in the dawn of infancy right now. At let's say nine hundred billion, whatever the number is, it's published, it's reported, it's a consolidation of all the different currencies. And so imagine. We just brought in a, a massive amount of monetary value in the form of cryptocurrency that is equally being uh, utilized throughout the same economy, right? We, we, we're not just in a, a New York stock exchange world. We're not just uh, in the Dow you know, index. We now have a plethora of new instruments in which to buy, to sell, to invest in. I mean, are you kidding me? People are buying cryptocurrencies and they're doing well. There's this new expansion of financial wealth. Um, and so when you put that into the equation of a lessened uh, government tax or the amount of expansion in the economy is catastrophic in a favorable manner. And Many people are very aware of the of the indi- uh, the the key performance indicators of when you place capital into a market. What does it expand to? And there's a number. It's eight times. Like if I put a facility in, you know, Miami, and I'm gonna you know lease a building and hire some people, and we're gonna manufacture you know cheeseburgers or whatever people manufacture these days. Right. And the, the, if I put a million dollars into that, into that cheeseburger factory in Miami, um, the impact to the local economy is eight times. So eight million times, eight million dollars would be, you know, through payroll, through haircuts, through gasoline purchases, through auto parts dealers, through whatever, Walmart, you know, just, you know, you understand the economy. So eight times. So in the, in the model where the investor doesn't have to, lose 72 percent of his net profits is earning you know his net profits to agencies and taxing authorities and he's holding let's just say he's holding 92 percent he's holding 92 percent and then you scale the the massive wealth that's been brought in by cryptocurrency we are seeing we are going to see the greatest abundance and growth ever Mm -hmm. ever on the individual so a lot of people listening to this robert are going to say well that's great but I've never bought a cryptocurrency before. I don't know how to use a cryptocurrency. I don't know anything about it. What would you say to that? And how easy is it to own and utilize MetaOne coins? Well, I'd say two things. I'd say, number one, you are positively being benefited by the cryptocurrency economy. Holding a coin or not holding a coin, there's things happening that are beautiful and they're expanding. And very favorable. So in in that in that sense, I mean, I know people that don't know anything about cryptocurrency. They think it's like a, a bad news release from eight years ago, but their value of their home has gone up considerably because of this expansion of wealth in the area. I mean, they, they're sitting on thirty percent increased uh, real estate values. <laughs> so so they're gonna the economy will will show who it is and who uh, and the, and the value proposition of cryptocurrency. Number one. And then number two, uh, the question was how to do, how to actually transform and uh, convert in cryptocurrency. So, you know, with us, it's it's um, we have a lot of education. A lot of our, our, our Meta One Coin hardliners, as they're named, they're they're not they're not this you know the savvy alleged savvy millennial. Um, they're they're you know 50, 60, 70 years of age computers. You know, in some of their minds, we're in a large room somewhere at a university. So we, we're very familiar with that demographic. And 
we've catered and facilitated our, our, our systems, our education to be very simple for everyone. And, and it's, and I know it sounds, it sounds difficult at first. And, um, and so, but it really isn't, it, it's the, probably the easiest thing you've ever done. And so we have a lot of training, a lot of support. We have people that will actually walk you through the process and, and, and facilitate whatever questions and answers you need. And we have a lot of training to get the people right now in their mind that have never touched crypto is horrifying to them. And they went to university of Texas when there was a computer, the size of a building, right? Those people, we know who you are <laughs> and, and we can uh, convert you to cryptocurrency. And I would just say one thing, once you do your first cryptocurrency financial transaction, once you send a coin or a sub coin or whatever to someone else, and you do it one time, I can assure you, you will never go to Wells Fargo Bank and wait in a wire line behind a you know list of people asking you um, why you're sending your money to somebody else. <laughs> you know, all those lovely questions. What you're they doing, ask. why are you doing it? Right, because the difference is, and it's, it's implied and very simple, is that a secured man or woman operating through a private trust transacting in a non-US dollar cryptocurrency such as Metal One is wholly owned by you for the first time ever. You own this, okay? So no one's gonna ask you why you're sending your coin to some other address or something. And there's, no one's gonna ask you these questions. And, and then you're like, well, why do they ask me that at Wells Fargo? Well, they ask you that at Wells Fargo because you're a fictional character. You have a fictional a, a bank account uh, within the Fedwire and US Treasury, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, that assigns you these numbers as a fictional character and you're transacting in US dollars, okay? You do not own your money in your bank account. And I don't, I don't care what, I know this is gonna be hard to think. You're, you're, yes, you're a beneficiary of the money in your account. However, trust me, if you really owned your money, they wouldn't ask you, you know, about all these questions. Like, is it really yours? Do you really know where it's going? I mean, uh, all these questions and other people that do bank wires know exactly what I'm talking about or any banking right now. They know like, why am I being questioned? You don't own your money and you don't own yourself. And, and so when you own yourself and you own your money, it's a beautiful thing. And just do one coin transaction with us, send a penny, send a dollar, send it a couple of times, send it back and forth to your friends. You'll be hooked. You will never look back. You will never look back. So. It's there a is a build time out with the bank and there with um I know that it's it's almost time to close. We've covered a lot of information here, but there is a build out with a bank and a debit card and there's liquidity, there's it's it's actual you can trade um, other cryptocurrencies on the Meta Exchange. You can there's a whole lot of flexibility that we didn't cover in this conversation. It's 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 a lot. We we are fully facilitating all the technology required to transact as a living, breathing human in commerce. It's a lot of technology. You can send and receive any denomination of coins. You can do it from your smartphone. You can do it securely. Uh, it's, it, and to us, a wallet is not only a bank account, it's your own private bank in essence, really. So the, the scope of this would be, uh, it'd be another call you know, to discuss the technology that we have. It's on our white paper, it's uh, presented. Um, we ha we're, we're planning on a full production launch in the very soon, very soon. Uh, the final uh, technology edits and additions to our, our wallet are, are beautiful and tested and a lot of coin holders have, have access to this and we're, we're increasing the technology and functionality is beautiful. We're adding more security um, and it is, your own private bank in essence, and you own it. You can transact freely. No one's gonna ask you why you're sending your money to someone else. It's it's a beautiful thing. And at the end of the day, if you were to say, you know, what is Metal One Coin? What the hell is Metal One Coin at this point? And and if and if I was to answer it in my elevator pitch of one sentence is, you know, we are leaders teaching fictional characters to be leaders again and to remember who they are in commerce. It's really simple. It really is allowing each individual to understand what kind of world they're living in and what they can do about it. 
Absolutely. Thank you very much for your time. And there is one more thing that I wanted to say. We were talking about the technology, and it is so fun to say. It's something that you're working on, and it's it may even lead into someone wanting to tune in for next time, but I'm just going to say one time integrated photonic quantum processor. <laughs> How amazing is that? It's it's I mean, amazing is a, a, a good enough adjective for how mind-blowing this is. And I, you know, there's certain times in your life where you have these moments, you're like, there's no freaking way this is possible. And I, trust me, everything's possible to me. And when I sit there and I look at the quantum frame and the processing of a quantum frame and what is now possible, it seems a ma- it seems magical if you didn't have a firm grip in physics, computer science, and mathematics. <laughs> Um, but mathematically speaking, in a linear algebra sense, with photonics creating super state processing elements for a quantum frame in which we are doing now, and um, it's 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 absolutely the most amazing technological uh, um, aspect uh, that is in the market today, and we're developing it. And it is part of the meta meta block, the meta security platform. And we could definitely talk about it for days. I could talk about it for eternity, but it's probably the most exciting technology I have seen. I have seen. I have seen. And ladies and gentlemen, you now have a teaser for possibly (laughs) the next podcast. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you so much for listening. Robert, thank you for being here. And until we meet again, live freely (laughs) and live abundantly.